I'm Jim Hoekstra. I'm uh, uh, from Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. I'm the doc and I'm Senior Vice President for Network Development for Wake Forest. I have with me Catherine Doby, who is the Chief, a Chief Administrative Officer. Um, there's health. We were asked to come give an update on what's happening with Allegheny Health, especially around the uh, uh, building of the medical office building and the renovations of the hospital. Let me kind of give you a little update on what's happened in the last few years, just kind of bring everybody up to speed. Um, we started uh, having discussions between Wake Forest and what then was Allegheny Medi Memorial Hospital in about 2013, 2014. 2014, we entered into what's called a shared services agreement where Wake Forest uh, partnered with Allegheny Memorial Hospital to bring clinical services up here, uh, hemonc, cardiology, pulmonology, GI. Uh, we brought those services and those doctors up to set up clinics in, uh, in Allegheny Memorial and also helped quite a bit with some back office functions. Um, Allegheny continued to struggle, has continued to struggle with declining volumes, especially on the inpatient side. Uh, continue to struggle financially. So in 2017, we formed a new organization. That new organization was essentially called Allegheny Health LLC. It was a 50-50 partnership between Hugh Chatham Memorial Hospital down in Elkin and Wake Forest Baptist in Winston-Salem. The reason for that partnership is because it's much diff more difficult for Wake Forest to support a hospital three counties away, and many of the services that we could provide um, couldn't be provided as easily as it would be for Hugh Chatham to provide them from one county away. We partnered together so that we could both bring services to Allegheny and both bring, uh, shall we say, coordination of care across the across Allegheny County. So some of the services provided up here, like orthopedics, uh, podiatry, uh, are provided by uh, Hugh Chatham. Some of the services like cardiology, hemonc, pulmonary, are provided by Wake Forest, and together we're able to build a, a health system in a, in a rural community where it uh, would be very difficult for that, that health system to survive on its own. I don't know if you all have noticed, but over the last few years, a lot of critical access hospitals in rural settings have had troubles. And about the only ones that have not had troubles are the ones that have been able to partner with somebody that's got a larger health system to help support them in both clinical ways as well as financial ways. Indeed, that's the case with, with here where the LLC that was formed between Hugh Chatham and Wake Forest Baptist is now supporting Allegheny Health. Used to be called Allegheny Memorial Hospital, now it's called Allegheny Health. So that transaction happened in 2018. As part of that transaction, Hugh Chatham and Wake Forest paid off the debt that was owed by Allegheny Memorial Hospital and we continue to support Allegheny Memorial Hospital. Both of us to this point, to the tune of three plus million that we've invested in Allegheny Health. Also need to give you a little update on what's happening with regard to the building. Nick Forrest and Hugh Chatham both agree that the future for Allegheny Health is not an inpatient facility. If you look at what's happening in medicine, inpatient numbers are going down. If you look at what's happened in Allegheny County, inpatient numbers have gone down. That's why Allegheny Memorial Hospital in its old form was struggling. The number of patients that are on those inpatient wards is really small. Typically two patients, maybe three uh, any given day that are acute, and then we have a couple of nursing, nursing care patients. So it's really not a very small, not a very big amount. The ER and the outpatient is what keeps that place going. The ER and the outpatient is what is growing. Our future that we thought was best for Allegheny Memorial Hospital and Allegheny's board thought was most important for Allegheny Hospital is to move it to an outpatient setting. We have a limited amount of inpatients, a couple of beds here and there, total of seven is what we're looking at, and an ER and a much bigger outpatient footprint. That's the vision that was created back in 2015, 2016, and that's the vision what we've, what we've put forward for you now. To this date, the partnership between Hugh Chatham and, and Wake Forest has been very positive. We've, we've had an enormously uh, good working relationship. For Allegheny Health up here, it's also been very positive. 
We've been able to do a lot with regard to the facilities, do a lot with regard to the, uh, to the uh, clinical services, and much of the outpatient stuff, primary care, specialty care, is either stable or growing. The ER is stable. The inpatient continues to decline. That fits with what our future model is for Allegheny Health. Okay. So part of the transaction that happened in 2018 was built on the premise that we're going to take Allegheny Memorial Hospital and move it to a limited inpatient model, a much bigger outpatient footprint. That requires building a building. It requires building a medical office building. We knew that. We also know that's very expensive, and we got to do it right, and we got to do it um, as a, in partnership. And so we started at that time with the help of Ricky Brown and many others, the capital campaign where c contributions were accepted to help us build that medical office building and help us renovate Allegheny Health to its new form. Okay. Uh, those plans take some time to develop. What we did is we put together the plan, we did the, acquisi or the acquisition or the transaction, then we went into what can best be described as a bidding and design phase, and also went into can best be described as a verification phase with CMS. Now here's the tricky part. In order for us to take a critical access hospital like Allegheny and downsize it significantly on the inpatient side and increase it significantly on the outpatient side requires approval from CMS. They have to, Center for Medicaid, Medicare and Medicaid Services, they have to approve it and say, yes, it will still qualify to be a critical access hospital. We went for that approval with them prior to starting the medical office building. It doesn't make any sense to start building if we know that we can't get it approved. That took time. You know as well as I do, our friends from the federal government do not move very fast, and it took a long time to get that. In the process of getting that thing approved, to say that the numbers kept going up in terms of the cost as well. So we had to redo our funding and redo our financial calculations and squeeze significantly on the contractors to get them to come in on their bid. That took some time. It's across the goal line now. As of January, the board from Hugh Chatham approved the medical office building and renovations. As of the 1st of March, Wake Forest Board approved it. They were higher price tags than original, so we had to approve it. We had to get it approved. As of the second week of March, we have signed contracts with the contractor. Um, I would show you a sign, but we're trying to get the slides up. We have a contractor, we have a developer, we have an a, uh, uh, architect. The architect is Odell, the developer is Summit, the contractor is Bloom. All those were low bids because we went under budget. It's now signed, it's moving forward. They signed the contract at the beginning of, of, or the middle of March, and that contract is for 518 days to finish the project. So they have that much time to get it done. So a little less than a year and a half, roughly, to get it done. They have started, they are working. You may not know it, we have slides. Life is good. <laughs> see, see why we got her around? <laughs> yeah, can we go to the slide on the uh, MOB? This is where we are. Committee, we have the CMS thing, which I contract to sign the Now, what we were planning on doing at that point was having a party it to you all and having a town hall and showing it to the world. A little thing came named COVID got in the way. All of a sudden we couldn't have public, we couldn't have a town hall. We wanted to make a big announcement, make a big hullabaloo of it and, and everything, but it just didn't happen. Matter of fact, let's just say we got sidetracked a little bit. I know Catherine has been sidetracked here at Allegheny. We all got sidetracked because we've just been beat down by this is a very, very, very hard time for health systems. Volume standpoint, from a financial standpoint, from a stress and fear standpoint, from a change standpoint, and clobbered in the last month and a half. 
So we couldn't bring it to you guys and say, look, here it is. I'm going to try to do that now, okay, and try to show you at least what's going on. That Mr. Chairman, got in the way. I think that slide and the information on that slide right there deserves a thundering round of applause right <laughs> now for this community <laughs> and what's happening. We really didn't want to have a party. <laughs> this got in the way. We'll, t we'll take the results <laughs> over the party. Next slide. So this, is, this is what the sign is going to look like when it goes up, and I think it's going up either this week or next. They are working inside, but this is what the sign looks like. Here's the This is a, a rendering of what it's going to look like. This is the hospital, which out front this is where the medical office building presently where the Doughton wing is and where the administrative building is all that has to be torn down the medical office building Back over here is the the hospital over here. The sign I showed you on floor so it's one below the rest of the hospital the main floor this will be the drive up entrance parking lot right over here. right over here the office building the office building something that has to happen before that building gets built not seeing right now cranes or destruction of those buildings because before we build that we actually have car is going to be to be the new emergency department in part right here is all here that's your inpatient six seven beds total what's important about this is right now we have the inpatients in one So, so the, the economies of scale allows us to cut our cost and still be able to take care of just as many patients as we're doing now. Not only that, but we have to have these areas built to move out of the old area before we can actually take down those wings and build a medical office building. You're not seeing a medical office being being built yet. That won't actually start till around the first of the year. Okay? Right now, there's internal renovations happening to build the new emergency department and new inpatient setting slide this is a rendering of the of the office building um, you'll see that this is the the uh, ground the main floor which is the main floor for the hospital hospitals over here this is the main floor that connects to it so patients who come in can connect to get the lab draw to get radiology to go to get uh, um, you know uh, go to the ER if they need to go uh, etc um, down here is going to be the clinic part of it, which is the walk-in area. This is the back side of the, of the medical office building. Uh, so you can see also this is actually where the ER entrance is going to be over here. And there's going to be a connection through that building to the helipad so that patients can come from the helipad straight into the ER. Next slide. This is the um, medical office building ground floor where the cars drive up. This is clinic. So here's a waiting room. You walk in right here, waiting room right here. This part right here is all primary care. The present Allegheny family practice that is one of the little outbuildings will be moving into this area. They have five providers. They're going to be taking up about two thirds of this space. This is plenty of space for what they're seeing. Um, we're also going to add an urgent care to this area. So there'll be urgent care and after hours urgent care for our businesses. We know we, 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 we haven't had that yet because we haven't had the space to put it in or the people, but that'll be coming shortly as well. Up here is what's called the specialty. So up here is going to be cardiology, uh, pulmonary, 
the internal medicine clinic with Dr. Arosha, all that is up here. So primary care here, specialty care up here. This will be rotating many, many physicians, um, and this will be mostly Allegheny family practice. Uh, there's plenty of space in there to be seeing you know, what, the, what they're seeing now, plus room to grow in the future. Next, next slide. This is upstairs. Right now, the upstairs is going to have PT and rehab and pulmonary rehab right here. Much bigger space, moving them down off the hill into some brand new space, connecting with the hospital, should allow that to grow. In many uh, small rural hospitals, PT and rehab are huge. In ours, we just have had, had the facility to do it right. So we want to be able to have a good facility to allow that to grow. That should be great. This area over here is multi-use right now. We're using it for the future. We assume this is going to grow. We want to build some, some room for growth. So that part right there is, is future growth. Next slide. This goes back to the emergency department again. Uh, I just showed you this already. We can skip that and go to the slide after that. So this is what it came in as. We originally had this designed at about 12 million because steel has gone up, labor has gone up, gas has gone up, everything's gone up over the last three years. It's coming in right around 15 million for the whole project. Okay, 15 million is, is a pretty hefty price tag. Four million has been collected from the capital cam campaign so far. We are anticipating 5.9. Uh, they have 6.6 .6 in pledges. We're anticipating they'll collect 5.9. We're hoping that they collect 5.9. Because every bit of it's going to be needed. Um, this is putting a heavy burden on Hugh Chatham. It's putting a heavy burden on us. It's putting a heavy burden on the people who've contributed to the capital campaign. It's, it's, a, big it's a big build to do this. It's a lot of money. Um, so, so it's it's going to do it. We're committed to doing it. But it is a lot of money. We've got to make it happen. Next slide. This is to show you that what's happening, okay? You probably haven't noticed it because, again, there's no MOB building up. If you actually go into the building right now, there's renovation happening. These are pictures uh, of some of the renovations that are happening right now, which is preparing the emergency department to be moved. Renovate the emergency department, move it back. So those renovations are happening as we speak. The sign should be going up pretty quick on the outside. Uh, we've seen the sign. You've seen the sign. We just haven't put it in the ground yet. Um, and again, a lot of this has been slowed down because of the COVID thing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's a little bit slower than it should be because of, you know, a lot of people are just not working. Yes. Let me reiterate, uh, we started off this project uh, with the intention to be able to build a health system in Allegheny County. We wanted to support a health system that would be good for Sparta, good for the county, good for the patients up here, keep them safe and keep them well cared for without having to go down the hill, without having to travel. I mean, we wanted an ER close by in case they had emergencies, with rapid transport in case they need it, or to be able to take care of what they can here. Built a health system that has done that to a large extent, but it's been limited by its facility. Now we're changing the facility. Our commitment as Wake Forest, Hugh Chatham's commitment, Don can shake his head, is unwavering. This project has started. This project is moving. We intend to finish this project. We intend to keep this health system up to date, and we intend to keep this health system relevant and growing in Allegheny County. It's what the city needs. It's what the county needs. It's what the people need. Um, it's costing us a lot to do this, but it's the right thing to do. Okay. We're going to continue to invest in our clinical programs up here, providers, programs, you know, we, we brought some new people in the last couple of years, including podiatry has been brought in. We brought in a new surgeon. Um, there's, there's new programs that are being added all the time. And we do that more once we have the space to put them in. That'll be great. A vibrant, sustainable health system is crucial to the economic and population growth in Sparta and in this county. We believe that everybody in this county has a vested interest in that happening. We. Wake Forest and Hugh Chatham outside the county also have a vested interest in making that happen. But it has to be a partnership. We all have to share in that. The people of this county have contributed big time to the capital campaign. They're shelling out. Wake Forest and Hugh Ch Chatham have already contributed a large amount of money to make this happen and are going to contribute a lot more to make this happen. 
only makes sense that everybody contributes because in the end, everybody benefits from the health system that we establish. And that MOB gets built, and it will be built, we all can look back and say, I'm proud of what we invested in. We will be able to do that as well. It's a long journey, but we hope to get there. Questions? Do they have to do on-site lab work in this facility? Yeah, we can do that now. All the radiology and lab that's there now will continue to do. You know, we're, we're closing down some things like the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Pharmacy is going to get smaller, but um, that's all part of efficiency, but not function. The function stays the same. Glad to hear the urgent care is you're going to have that. We that's have a, to. We, just, we haven't had a place to put right. it, but we're going to shortly. Um, we need it. I agree with that completely. The, the, the employers need it. We've heard it loud and clear from our board as well. Just a question about the uh, the hospital acceptance of veterans. How, how does right now my hospital is in sale, 127 miles one way. We have a lot that go to Johnson City. They go all over. How is is there any change in the policy of how veterans are accepted and billed? How the billing would go? Yeah. Um, so there are changes that are happening in the VA system. There are not, not changes that are happening locally. If you are a veteran, you can come to this facility as part of the VA Choice Program, which is now changed over the VA Mission something or other. As part of that program, you can still come to this county to this county to get your care, and then the CMS or, or uh, the VA will, will reimburse us for that care. So we don't turn veterans away. But if you're doing something that's like totally elective, you have to get it approved by the VA before you come. If you come for an emergency, it's not a problem. We build a VA and the VA will take care of that. If you come here for surgery that's elective, you have to get it pre-authorized. That's, by the way, not an Allegheny issue. That's everywhere. Every hospital has those exact same rules. There's nothing special about Allegheny. In the last few years, I've, I've had to go to the hospital twice, to the emergency room. Couldn't have asked for better care. Some of my nurses were girls that played softball for me that went to the high school here. I, I loved that part of it. Yeah. But in the registration, when we had to fill out the papers, there wasn't a question, are you a veteran? And both my visits were emergency visits. Yeah. And I just think there needs to be some way that when there's an emergency that when you fill out the paperwork, you can check off that I'm a veteran and see about the billing being done at that time. Yeah. It should be in the database already, but we can double check and make sure. Not a problem. It should be in the billing database that you're a veteran, so you shouldn't have to do that. We'll work, we will work it out on the back side. The open, unused space, is that something that could be used for future pandemic? Uh, Absolutely. Whether that's future clinic expansion, adding more primary care, uh, that's we wanted to make sure we left. You know, it's not it's, it's it's expensive to build a building. You might as well build it to last. So we thought we'd put a little extra in there. Future for pandemic the could be put into there. Yeah. Further questions? Ask a question.